Hello again, everyone. Ketta Kossman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, coming to you in the third week of April from uh, here in Vancouver, British Columbia. We've had the Easter long weekend, which is quite a big deal in Canada. And so this is a time of year that we normally are able, we've had our break, the folks have been on vacation uh, for at least a few days, and we are able to take a look at how things are going for construction and housing. So Housing Starts Data came out this week, and I'll be talking about that uh, together with my lumber prices, which we do every week. Um, to explain uh, what's happening right now in construction and for the lumber industry and then uh, maybe give a little bit of an idea of what we can expect to be coming up in these uh, spring uh, building season 2022. So I've been saying uh, since last year and uh, at, the, at the beginning of this year 2022 looks like it's going to be quite similar to 2021. So uh, I understand that lending rates are going up, mortgages are getting more expensive, which is um, discouraging a few people, maybe here and there. However, it's important to note that the ratio of investor buying of houses and of property is getting higher. So uh, for the past uh, couple plus years, when all of this, you know, home building and especially home sales and house prices has been going up, uh, seems quite drastic in comparison to the past 10 years. But remember that, you know, for those uh, 10 years um, previous, the uh, definitely the housing um, activity was underbuilt uh, when looking at the population and the demographics and also the home sales and the house prices, you know, you could say depressed or maybe not all that glowing. So given all that in the uh, past couple of years when things started to heat up quite a bit, I've been saying that it's not a bubble. We're not in a bubble. Uh, it's real people buying real homes. There have been people buying second homes, but a huge amount of the activity was just people, you know, moving up, relocating. Uh, since the end of last year, the it's been a noticeable uh, amount of uh, investment buying, uh, and at the beginning of this year, it even increased more. So uh, it went from one fifth in fourth quarter of 2021 was investor buying of property to fully 30 percent now in first quarter 2022. So that's something to watch, as things like mortgage rates and lending. It doesn't matter for investors they have a different uh, way of financing uh, and that's quite a different um, relationship than for regular people buying a, a home to live in or even a second property to rent and so the housing starts uh, that just came out the total uh, starts looks a bit flat uh, compared to the previous month but is up four percent compared to one year ago so January uh, so March of 2021 um, single family starts, uh, they were actually down a little bit, almost 2%, uh, and were down 4.4% from one year ago. Now, I always s explain the previous year. As I've said, month over month uh, data uh, can be quite volatile, and you know, this is seasonal activity building and lumber manufacturing as well. Um, and looking at the same month one year ago is more of like an apples to apples comparison. And also we know what happened last year. So uh, taking this year, which is, you know, something that we're just finding out about now and comparing it to the data from one year ago, same month and knowing what we know from last year helps us to understand um, how the market is going now compared to previously. Uh, now permits as I always say, is quite important. Um, permits are usually uh, indicating starts in two months. So we have uh, permits data for March, which gives us an idea of what we can expect for construction in May. And that is normally quite busy. You know, now even we're hearing from our sources this week, uh, the third week of April, that construction activity across the US is, is heating up quite a bit as the weather is uh, getting nice.
Canada had um, a big cold snap and snow dump uh, in the past week, uh, but that'll melt quickly now. It's it, Days are getting longer. That's really, I know that we're in the north and it's cold and all that kind of stuff, but for the temperature and especially for the snow, it um, when the days get longer as they are now, doesn't last long. It's really about darkness and how much night there is, uh, which is what keeps the snow on the ground in those, you know, winter months, November, December, January. So permits, again, for total construction, uh, relatively flat in uh, March compared to February, uh, up 6.7% compared to March of 2021. So we're not slowing down. I mean, I know the mortgage thing is putting everyone into, you know, thoughtfulness, but the actual activity is definitely not going to be slower now than it was last year. It might be slower in third quarter 2022 than it was last year, but this spring building season is at least as busy. Uh, and then for single family, which I always stress, single family construction is the largest proportion of all construction and it uses the most wood. And so, of course, uh, when I, uh, in my business of uh, giving lumber prices, we talk about the single family um, in good correlation with the lumber sales. So uh, single family uh, permits were down quite a bit, 4.8% compared to February, and were down almost 4% compared to February of last year. So we've got some mixed um, data here. Total starts, uh, that's quite important, uh, that includes the multifamily. So if total starts are up quite a bit and single family is down, that means the multifamily is um, getting more attention, which is good because um, the apartment uh, rental, the rental prices and the availability is very, very tight. Uh, rent rates are going up. And so just right now, let's look at the graphs. And I'll show you uh, some of this information with the uh, construction activity and my prices, um, explain what's going on there. And then I'll come back and talk about uh, some of these other things like the inventories uh, and especially of, about the rentals, because I think that indicates a lot um, in terms of the future demand for construction and uh, why I think that. So this is uh, U.S. Housing Starts uh, against my softwood lumber prices, the three main benchmark items, Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce, Southern Pine, 2x4. The black line is total starts and the gray line is single family. You can see that from 2019 to the end of 2020, really good correlation. That spike in the lumber prices uh, after the middle of 2020 is followed by the housing starts into the end of that year. Then uh, last year, a lot of volatility in the lumber prices way up and then a big correction way back down with the housing starts continuing on an upward trend. Now we have just at the beginning of this year, another smaller spike and another correction down where the single family starts seem to be leveling off a little bit. So here we have the benchmark Western Spruce 2x4, which was the purple colored line on the previous graph. Here we have 2019, the pink line looking very flat as the previous graph also did. Then the yellow line 2020 picking up in third quarter. The blue line last year going a little bit crazy, but as you notice carefully, the end of last year really matched quite closely the end of 2020. And then the purple line this year, I would say that that peak that we've just seen in the past month or so would correlate to the peak in a few weeks of the blue line from 2021, but the drop not so severe. This suggests to me that the supply demand balance is finding equilibrium and prices are coming into what we're gonna have to start calling the new normal. So that purple line right now is just above US $1,000 per thousand board feet. And generally speaking, historically, that price, these prices would be getting softer at this time of year, 
but we don't know. The demand I'm already hearing today, uh, the fourth week of April, is quite strong from the sawmills uh, selling. And if prices go up, I don't know, but it looks like they should flatten out, uh, not necessarily start going down toward June as they have in the past. Here are the six individual uh, softwood lumber and panel prices that we uh, put on the snapshot every week. The comparison to one month ago, if you look over onto the right, it's down as that previous graph was showing. Uh, but in the past weeks, that downward trend has been moderating and it's looking like we are indeed reaching some kind of equilibrium. And so now this is uh, single family data only. The black line is the starts and the gray line is the permits against those same three uh, lumber prices in the first graph. And once again, you can see quite a nice correlation, uh, much more leveling off of the housing compared to what the lumber prices were doing last year. Huge swing up and then quite a big correction down. The general trend since uh, second quarter last year looks like it's going up. Just in the last month, the housing starts and permits for single family ticking down a little bit. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Month over month is not um, particularly interesting. There's always volatility there. You want to see the long-term trend. It might be moderating over the very, very high activity, especially there from second quarter 2020 into 2021. Uh, but even that is good. Even that is an improvement over, you know, 2018, uh, 2006 to 2018. And we'll only be able to tell later on as this year progresses. Okay, so great. Um, I think that really explains a lot. It tells you uh, quite a few different things that um, might be able to help people make their decisions or even just folks who are watching, uh, wondering what's going to happen, you know, with the economy and with um, forestry and with housing. Uh, so... If you like what you see here, this is all just a small portion of the full data that we do, 500 individual softwood lumber and panel prices every Friday. Um, we've been publishing since 1952. I'm the third owner. Um, the link in the caption here goes to my own website. And along the top, if you can look uh, to see subscribe and fill out the form, and we can we ask for a sample and we'll send you uh, the most recent uh, full price data. You can see uh, what all the commodities that we cover, dimension, boards, uh, straight lengths, um, studs, uh, different panel, plywood, OSB, cedar prices, all everything across North America. And along with the commentary explaining why the prices are changing, what's happening in the market. Uh, and if you're happy to just see these small little updates that I do once in a while, uh, click like here, uh, click subscribe, and you'll be notified uh, whenever I make um, another video. Coming up will be um, the monthly lumber market update that I do, and I'm also going to be doing a video um, right now for um, the ever so uh, popular uh, sawmill capacity utilization rates and lumber production that comes out of the Western Wood Products Association. So here for uh, what we've just talked about with the housing and the lumber prices, um, just some quick points to um, for people to note. Um, we've got, I talked about this before and some people put uh, comments, which is great to see that you're paying attention and um, uh, noticing why I'm saying this. Uh, the uh, backlog of total uh, housing approved but not yet started, so that's the backlog, uh, is up yet again by almost 3% uh, to another break, uh, record-breaking number of 280,000 units. So 280,000 units approved but not yet started, which is very high. Um, absolutely breaking any record since this data has been made. Um, the single family uh, units actually under construction is also breaking records. 811,000 uh, single family units now under construction, which is the highest since 2006. And everybody remembers um, 
the market crashing and uh, the horrible things that happened after 2006 for housing and for the economy. Uh, and the other thing to note, as I mentioned in my earlier piece, is the rent rate in March went up by the most that it ever has in the past 20 years, uh, annualized. So I would sort of venture that it's the beginning of the year now and that might be still going up for this year, okay? Um, and I mean, the reason for that, as everything is supply and demand, you know, uh, vacancy rates in fourth quarter 2021 were the lowest since mid-1984. So you have just not enough inventory for rent and rental rates going up. Not enough inventory of existing homes for sale and house prices going up. M not enough inventory of new homes for sale and new home prices going up. And these all will push construction, multifamily and single family. Then you have a growing ratio of investors buying property as opposed to people buying houses to live in or second homes to rent. This all spells ongoing momentum of strong activity, at least for this year. We'll see after summer how things are going to look for the end of the year and for 2023 folks are saying there should be a slowdown in the real the realtor folks are saying there should be a slowdown in first quarter of next year but we'll have to see how much of that supply does come on the market to meet all of this very strong demand